I always get this like gut wrenching feeling when I'm about to show up on set. Can't overthink it. The sky's the limit. I know I'm on the right path. I don't know where it's going to take me at the end. Nothing is ever going to go precisely how you plan it. A lot of times, limitations create the opportunity to make something different. Hey guys, it's the day of the shoot. We're packing everything up, I'm waiting for the, some of the team to arrive here, but we've got a lot of stuff going on here. Got the jibs and the C stands, a bunch of containers. And then we got more aperture lights. We got more of this overhead rigs and tripods, a snore cam, some more grip and gaff gear, a cart, this helmet. I'll show you more of that later. We've been preparing for this shoot for about a week now, so it's been like 12 hour days constantly. Just been working my butt off trying to get this done. So I'm super excited to see how this looks on set and get everything together. I've been using a camera for like six years, but this was the first time I was ever able to get almost 50 people to show up for a set and contribute to the video. It was like a dream come true, but in my head, I was just so worried about everything falling into place. But then Jake, my cousin, he showed up and I felt like I had a grip again. Jake, how are you feeling about this? I'm feeling pretty good. We're gonna get a lot of productive work done today. Awesome. You guys hear that? We're gonna be, no, I can't even see myself. We're gonna be productive. My name is Eric Morse and I was BTS on this film. Also just pitched in wherever I could during the whole project. Introduce yourself. Eric, doing BTS today for this amazing video. I got much to say on that, that is raining. <laughs> Seeing familiar faces, people I love, it always just really grounds me and helps me think positively. My relationship to Sam and how I know him is a corporate gig, which I met him on just randomly, and now he's like the little another little brother that I never had, and he's a beast. So we're still trying to do some Tetris. Okay. Just Tetris wait. is okay. There's just a lot of moving parts, honestly. I feel like I'm just putting together somebody's wedding. We have a CFS Express. We have my C stands. Let's try to carefully uh, get the jib out. The chaos ensues. There's the stylist. Yeah, he's uh, he took, he went out thrifting for a bunch of props too, like for some of the jewelry. I'm excited to meet him. So it's oh, the yeah. first time that we were like even gonna do anything. So. It's exciting. Sick. So yeah, this was, I guess, my first time on the, on a set like this and on a set really for the first time. I mean, it was very interesting just seeing like the functions and the productions and things flying around. Um, and at the same time, me being a stylist, applying my knowledge and my ideas to the music video and to the set overall. Oh, I didn't tell either of you. Tell me now. I bought a 360 rig. Look at that, Tony Spence. Oh no, it doesn't. This thing is low-key pretty flimsy, so it's kind of, uh, we're kind of risking a lot using it, but we're gonna make it work for this one shot. This is the custom snore cam Jake and I built. That's sick. So. Oh, you guys built this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Proof is in the pudding. I've seen it in action. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any words to say? Uh, no. Was, it, was, there, was there a script that I forgot? Wing it. Wing it? Um, I really gotta take a shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be off to a great start. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Saurabh Jafarzadam. I was the DP or cinematographer for the music video. Our relationship with Sam started a few years back when we did a wedding together. Ever since then, we've just been hanging out, helping each other out with when it comes to projects. This is Sarab, our steady cam and designated pooper. Yeah. Here, wear this in the bathroom so we can catch all of it. I gotcha. Jake, can you help me get all the cables in here? 
I can't wait till people really see how much this fucking work is. Like, yeah. How much, right? You know what I mean, Eric? Like all the behind the scenes shit? Yeah. I think what made this different was really having more specialized roles and I was actually in a more hands-off role directing. And you have your power strip, right? The really nice one? Uh, the one like multiple port type thing? Yeah. Okay, cool. Cause I think we're gonna use that as a charging station, but also where the laptop is so that we oh. can um, just have like a uh, home base. I got you. Okay. What I think that makes a project successful in my eyes is just the team um, and everybody, you know, pulling together and getting excited about it and then seeing it all come together. I've always been the type of person to just do it myself. So trying to find a way that I can communicate what I actually need was a kind of um, a little bit of a struggle at first, but then slowly people started kind of um, catching on to my drift. What is she doing? Drinking a Capri Sun. How tasty is that Capri Sun right Delicious. now? I wanted to express things in a different way, I'm kind of looking back at it. Felt like a lot of the things that were discussed on set could have been discussed pre-shoot. So Rob, can you come? Mm -hmm. Can we go look at your car? Sure. Just see what we can fit. Yeah. I'm gonna try them. See how it works okay. out. Oh, okay. And I think a lot of that had to do with the timeline. So as a director, I think what I would do differently is try to give more space for that in the, the weeks leading up to the shoot. Location scouting as a team would have been helpful. I think that's probably the biggest thing. I know sometimes timelines don't like allow for that kind of thing, but I think sometimes time needs to be made. A lot of times we get too lenient with like clients and they are in a rush to like make stuff. But if they're independent artists that aren't label backed or anything, there's no reason that a little push can't be at least discussed, in my opinion. You cannot forget the SpongeBob cooler. <laughs> No, no sir. sir. There's one thing you can't forget today, it's right there. Yeah. <laughs> Camera's not necessary. No. no. This is Very necessary. Working with a team that Sam put together was really good. First time seeing a lot of these folks, so you never know what to expect and whose ass I need to kick, but it was okay. Some of the experiences that really stuck out to me was definitely some of the planning of it while we were there. Uh, a lot of the problems that end up showing up and we have to work around that, I always get the most adrenaline rush out of. I'm always looking for an opportunity for me to feel useful in a situation. So that's why I'm always asking questions. I'm always kind of being a little bit nosy and just being like, okay, so we're running a little bit low on time. So what can we do about this? What can we do about that? So it's the main model's birthday and Josiah wanted to do something to surprise her. So we got her a birthday cake. And it says, happy birthday. Really? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, are you outside the theater right now? Yes, yeah, so I'm on my way walking right now. All right, I'm going to meet you at the front of the theater, OK? All right, good brother. All right. All right, peace. Peace. My name is Tyandre Hassan Alvin, and I'm an independent filmmaker from Washington, D.C. Rig uh, kind of set up right there if you want to, if you want to maybe hold it. Okay. Yeah, I have a strap down for you. Nah, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. What's good, man? How you doing, brother? How you doing? Oh, this BTS. Yes, sir. Yeah. How you doing, man? Um, working with 444 Digital Media today. The role that I played on set was an assistant camera and body double to Sam. I honestly have no clue <laughs> what this music video is about, but that's the exciting part. Yeah. It's like going into a movie blind. Like, that's how I've been watching my movies lately. Like, not really right. knowing what's going on so I can be fully immersed. So, we'll see how this experience goes. Oh yeah, man. Get it. it was time to put all my doubts behind me and just hit the road. It was the longest two weeks of my life leading up to this day, but there was some place special to me we had to visit first to make sure everything went according to plan. We've arrived at Chick-fil-A. It's an amazing and beautiful cold weather. Not many people are gonna agree with that, but we have Chick-fil-A to suffer through it. My man. Yeah, brother. How are you? Good to see you too, man. How are you doing? Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, man. I do, because my feet are like... When we get there, there's about... The first thing that we have to do is unload everything. Okay. So, just get... Josiah was saying that there might be a staging area that we can use for the birthday party. Okay. Um, Not for the birthday party, but there might be an actual birthday party room. Okay. So, 
um, I'm gonna go in and talk to the owner, pay for the location, yada yada yada. So we just we just gotta set up a staging area. I'm gonna need you to help Joshua. Okay. Because Sarab and I are gonna set up all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. While you help Joshua set up. Actually, no, I'll have. Mm. You want me to just focus on balancing? I guess your camera on my on my rig in the meantime. Yeah. So actually, you two, I want you guys to get set up so you guys kind of like get accustomed to each other. Yeah. Um, I already. So I didn't show you the rig. What? Just grab. I, I mean, we. I pretty much all got the spice. same thing, right? I got Colby yeah. Jacks. Yeah, I just got Wayne. Okay, then this we is We got the list. spread. Look at Eric. He killing it, man. My, uh, really? I literally went 45 degrees in one direction and then just recorrected myself. It's not fun, bro. When I first walked into the roller rink, my initial reaction was, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing ever. Oh, we got a roll bounce up here. What's up, man? I'm James. This is one boy. And the other one is. What are you guys' names? Uh, Sarab. Sarab. Dre. Dre. Sarab, Dre, Jacob. Yep. That's a bang. Yeah. Yeah, for real. That's cool. I love it. This is my first time skating. I'm a little nervous. I'm like trying to figure it out. <laughs> and I see all these people walking in with all the equipment and there must have been 40 people in that room and I was truly humbled and that kind of was able to calm me down and also gave me a sense of duty where I was like, I have to kill this. Yeah, can you get that on the table over there? Uh, that's good. I need the cables that Sam walked away with. Cool. No, I need my battery pack. It wasn't here. Of course, I put it in the one room we were told not to put stuff in. Uh, yeah, definitely something that I learned for this shoot is definitely blocking, uh, blocking people and how that process would go in a larger group. I've never had to do that before. So for example, when you were walking into the building and going from the front desk to where your uh, friends were uh, for the video, uh, definitely uh, learning that process and learning uh, uh, how to move people and how to light those people to make sure that everything looked good, looked correct and stuff like that. Um, I definitely think that was something that I, I will definitely be uh, taking home with me and applying to future projects. Perfect. Well, now we're going to do this. So now you can grip it. There you go. How do you make a coffee? Oh, this is, um, this is like cold brew. Um, no, I already let you know that I only lit the roller rink. That was all I had to make sure everyone knew because there's no way to really say that in an Instagram caption. Um, and no one really cares. It's just me that cares. As a filmmaker, uh, just seeing the, the lighting set up, like it was insane. Um, and then just the wardrobe was great. And then just, just the story together. I mean, it's a, great, it's a great track and everybody involved really, really did it justice. My name is Jonathan Fogelson, AKA Fogel, AKA McLovin. Is it that is it that funny? This was your idea. This was your idea. Okay, okay, okay. Are you cold, bro? Classic building. I'm not gonna call it old, but this classic building. It's a little cold in this classic need, building. Need some heat. I mean, yeah, there were um, some just basic environmental issues. I mean, the the place was classic. So when the heat was broken, um, obviously, like the girls weren't wearing winter clothes. Like the guys were with all the jackets and stuff. So they were quite cold. Um, we didn't have a bathroom, that was a blast, or at least one of them was broken, so sharing one wasn't really optimal. So I'd say the funniest thing about the entire shoot was like the amount of food eaten. Um, a lot of snacks, ice creams, candies, pizza, like all all five categories of the food pyramid were crushed that night. We're talking about the gummy version of Skittles and how Walmart missed a huge opportunity by not keeping them in a frequent stock. Yeah. I mean, bro. WTF, they not, bro. They not only had the regular Skittles, they had the sour version as a gummy. Which I have not tried. 
I've Dude. only had the regular gummies, and the the amount of fluff and comfort you get from biting into the, something unimaginable. Be We're talking about gummy Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like half the, che the the Skittles experience is like the crunchiness. Nah, bro, you have to have gummy Skittles. It's new, but I just, just want to thank everyone for coming out here. This is a really dope shoe. I'm really happy to be able to produce this. It's been really bad weather, but we're turning it around, and yeah, we're gonna have a positive shoe. Let's go, guys. Go. Go. Get it. This is when I arrived, and I brought um, a couple things to help me out: mirrors, um, a steamer and of course hangers to um, hold all the clothing on the racks. I think with the jacket I'm a little bit. Okay, cool. But well, whatever you think. No, I think that's a good look. Since James was already there, we just went through and got some jackets and just picked out what was best for him. Cool, cool, cool. And then, uh, did you already have a necklace by any chance or anything? No, I didn't. Okay, I have one that I was gonna give you personally okay. if you wanted a pearl. Like, and then he has, a hard one. yeah, he has like an actual chain chain. Whatever you think. Just okay. Good. I might, I think the chain might look cool. I think this might look good with it. Yeah. I'm wearing a tie anyway, so you can't see this, so I have this thing he might wear. Okay, okay yeah. Once we got the outfits down, we called Sam to get some confirmation. Like fully take over the styling part of it, and then like work with a videographer, work with like a team to help with the production side. But we're kind of more into like the clothing side of things. So that's why I was down to you know help out with this full you know looks all around because that's what kind of what we do. But we kind of we kind of try to do it and also like a different way. Try to always change yeah, it, up. it up. Yeah, that's always. That's like our main bread and butter is like making it always like different, and unique. Those other girls. I think that's pretty much the only thing that I wanted to add to your. We're straight. Okay. okay. Yeah, you're pretty much good. Cool. My name is Savannah Petrunti. I am the lead model today. Super excited. So the last music video that I did was like a year and a half ago, and I ended up dating the guy for a little bit afterward, and he ran. He randomly just called me. I haven't talked to him in over a year. He randomly called me to wish me happy birthday. And it's really funny because I wore this exact same outfit for his music video. Oh no. Like this exact <laughs> I genuinely don't think anybody else could have done what Savannah did. The job was somewhat physically demanding. There was stunts that needed to be done, there was falls that needed to be taken, and if we didn't have a former NFL cheerleader, um, I don't know if it would have turned out the same or if we would have had liability or injuries. Um, there was also a lot of skating that needed to be done and for her to be athletic enough to do that was amazing. Secondly, she kept a positive attitude the entire time. Even when we went hours over until 3 a.m. Open that wolf. What's going on, gentlemen? What's good, good man? I'm finally here on set. First time doing yeah. something like this. So. James ready? has been working really hard on this, so I think it'll be great, and I think he'll he'll do big things. So hell yeah, I'm excited. Very first excited. Time. And what's your name, man? And Nick. What's your role in this? What's up, man? I'm the driver. And what's your name, bro? Ethan. Ethan. Good yeah. to meet you, man. I'm E. I don't quite know the role yet, but we did bring both the cars out here, so okay. Yeah. I don't know what he's got planned for it. He didn't want to tell me too much, but. That's my right hand what, man. What so kind of cars? See. We got a 59 Cadillac and then we have a 59 uh, Corvette. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, so driving bitch. in the rain was not yeah, easy. Yeah, it was a bit challenging no. to get here. But <laughs> we not made it. And, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, we're just hoping we make it back. So as he pushes in, I can walk in with a soft uh, I don't know, like a low. Are you laughing? That's fine. Do you want me to say that part too? Am I speak, saying point. all this? Yes. What is it, what's the first line again? Hey Josh. This yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what I want to Oh, okay. If I want to move it or if I just want to... But still a flare? Yeah. Does he want no flare at all? No, oh, I got the 1-4 and you're not we messing around. What's the 1-4? Yeah. Oh, the one foil on the lens. Mm. My bad. Look, when I'm AC, I'm in my AC mode. So that's, hey bro, that's like DP stuff right there. Yeah. Like <laughs> camera one, camera two, uh, B unit. Yep. All that. All yeah. that. So. Sam and I had discussed the, the storyboard and, and things along those lines prior to the shoot. And one of the main feedbacks that I had gotten was uh, framing and the leveling, making sure everything was uh, correctly compositioned. Okay. Still rolling. 
And once I took that feedback and I obviously capitalized on it, uh, everything else was very, very smooth and just streamlined. And everything uh, went pretty straightforward after that until we decided to change the lighting and the rigs right after that key shot. And that's um, where I think I made the first mistake. We ended up using the same lighting setup later on for the wides. So it set Joshua back a lot trying to recreate that and then create a whole new lighting setup for the 360 shot. You have to be like this close. Okay. Are you okay with that? Okay, that's <laughs> just do one uh, all the way through and just leave the other ones for now because we have to rig up the cloth stand. I want you to leave. Like, like, so it's going to go around you 360, so you can just try a couple different types. Yeah. So each time it'll just cut with you dancing a different way. Okay. I think it was there when things started to fall apart production wise. I knew it was going to set back the production a lot, but for some reason, I just wasn't thinking straight and I decided to shoot the singles first. This is why it's so cold in here because this fan is just doing its thing. <laughs> Even if he fucks it up, this has been one of the coolest experiences of my life. Does it really matter? Yeah. Like, isn't that what life is about? Having cool ass experiences? Isn't that don't, why we're all here? Don't tell him. Doing this? He's a pessimist. Don't tell him. You. I'm not a pessimist. <laughs> you. I like to rile people up. Look, he's getting all irritated already. Why do you think it's so important to get all the same shots that need the same lighting setup for continuity? If the lighting setups just don't feel like they were next to each other. It can be a little off-putting. That's all I would have done was like make sure that everyone who was there on time got more camera time, and we could have done a couple more shots on the roller rink, incorporating more people dancing around. Looking back after talking with Josiah, it really would have been a lot smarter to just shoot all of the extra scenes first so that we could get all of the people who had to go out there first. And get out. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, graduate college. I think we killed it. He killed it, honestly. Oh, yeah. Crushed it. Killed it. it. Mm -hmm. She killed it. I did all right. She took the lead. She took care of it. <laughs> Laura, you're up. It's all set, boy. Like, Yo, I haven't seen you yet on camera, man. What's your name and I'm what's Zion. your role? I'm Zion. I'm just a posse. Dude, listen to it's that voice. You can do voiceovers right if yeah. nothing else works out. You, you, you got this. Can you not say that one more time? I said, what's going on, my guy? What's going on? What's going on is that we're killing this first day. Of Hell yeah. Killing it. Okay, Sam is on point. Ron is on point. I don't know the gaffer's name, but he is definitely Yeah, on he's point. a beast. It's okay. We're allowed to be here. Wait, was, was there like soda? Don't do it. Don't say it. Oh, I, I get it. I get it. What are you whispering? Does she have time for a little gloss? Do I have time for a little gloss? I think you're okay. You think you, you, think you need it? I don't need it. Especially if we're about to start. How are we doing? Josh, I'm fine. Right there, pretty hot. Don't, don't we all look like yeah. Three, go. Go. How did you feel when you were going through all the film that we took? Looking back at what we had created under so much pressure and my own scrutiny, and obviously there was some mistakes and some things didn't go as planned. So for me, it was a really gratifying experience knowing that I'm looking at the footage now of all my hard work, knowing that I've never been able to achieve that level of quality, but at the same time, I was never really putting in that level of work. In the car saying that you don't play camera favorites, well I do, and it is canon. <laughs> All the way, all my mentors, all oh, my teachers. Oh, I thought teachers. you were sleeping. You were. I, 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 was, I was listening. My favorite aspect of this project, besides the food, honestly, truthfully, was the set. The location choice was pretty excellent. The wardrobe, the wardrobe choices were excellent. It just felt like the era that you wanted to be placed in. We did it. We captured that magic. Two fly over there. What? That's what I'm saying. They, they, they really just do it. Damn. What was your favorite aspect of the set? Again, probably just being able to be around that many different kinds of people, different kinds of creatives, 
just interacting with people, making connections, that kind of thing. I think the people that were there were the absolute perfect people that could have been in the video because for the most part, almost everybody responded well. And a lot of people started to, it was almost like a domino effect where when one person spreads that positive energy, it, it starts to get around. And I would notice in other rooms, I'd see Josiah, the producer, um, lightening the mood with a group of people that maybe were a little downcast, a little tired, a little upset. Um, next thing you know, he's buying ice cream bars for the girls and <laughs> buying Red Bulls and whatever we needed and getting everything going. So it was just, it was nice having people around me that were thinking likewise. I was starting to sort of freak out because we were already two hours behind schedule. I wouldn't even have known he was panicking, but I feel like another big job that I had to play was keeping him calm and collected and reminding him that like, dude, we're gonna crush this. Like no matter what seems like it's like falling through in the, in the end, we're gonna find a way to fix it. And we could always say things in post. <laughs> <laughs> Never did cut that part out. Right when I realized that, our transportation guy, Nick, said that he had to go and he was waiting a long time. In the conversation with him, some sort of switch just flicked in me and I was just went into problem solving mode and I just sorted it out. No way. No, it'll turn back on. Just... We decided to start shooting the car scenes and things from there just seemed to work out accordingly. They can't Yo, idle very well. Yeah. No power. Oh yeah, I put some muscle in So, I had initially planned for a lot of things. Things just didn't work out. And that's okay, but you know, you gotta make adjustments. There's only so much that you can do when you're faced with adversity on these type of shoots. So, really the best course of action a lot of times is to just make do with what you have and make the changes as necessary because it's better to have a finished product than an incomplete one. So, don't get too caught up in the vision. Just do what you need to do. 1959 Cadillac. It's got power windows. There you go. Last shot of the night. Yo, this car is insane. Let's hope it's a good one, huh? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Where this comes out? The other one goes down, too. That looks so sick. With the oh, tree no. in the background, the kind of like oh, that fog. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Damn it, boy. Thank you so much for the help. What's going on in here? You done done? Do I need to move? Out from underneath the covers. <laughs> Sadly, I was forced here. Yeah. Well, time to go home yet? So, time to go home. I'm about to throw a fifth. Someone doesn't start recording. Now with the mattress. You have to hold it like It's kind of like going like this. Let's, uh, here, come here. So. Camera? So. Jacob, Jacob. I feel like I'm like at some weird place from my childhood that like I don't remember Yo, going. Yeah, bro. Can you lead us? What? <laughs> 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 I mean, honestly, the whole thing was, was awesome and memorable, but if I had to pick one, definitely Sam getting knocked over a few times. <laughs> you don't look too bad. He's gonna, there it he's is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> one. I love Josh. Two, three, go. Like, dude, bar one to say thanks for having her. They all text me, like, good things about it. The song is great. Like, appreciate it. It's gonna be a masterpiece when we put it together. So, thank them again. Much love, everybody. Much love, bro. Yes, thank you. I'll text when I get back home. Thank you so much. Say it really loud for everyone in here. We're done! With this Ooh, yeah! Not the phrase you say. There's a phrase when you're finished here. That's a wrap! Hey! Yeah! <laughs>
So the morning after the first shoot, I woke up and the first thing I did was check my phone to make sure that it really happened. I might've believed I dreamed the entire thing because it was such an amazing experience. Probably the coolest thing I've ever done in my life and the most fun I've ever had. Now, we're here on day two. We got two locations, shooting with a car, and then on a renovated school bus. Now, there might be a lot less moving elements today, so things should go over pretty smoothly. Day two. You're the one that's like editing. But You're probably a perfectionist, so it might just be you. I mean, that's I who I'm trying to impress, baby. though. Yeah, you're gonna impress yourself, though. Because we expunged the majority of our resources for the first shoot day, we had a pretty limited team this time around. Is it gonna be weird if we're driving like during like this time? Like, is, yeah. is this supposed to be like after like we left? Yeah, so. So what this meant for me was simplifying a lot of what could get complicated. So initially we had planned out to use the Tilta Hydra Alien car mount, but then realized it just might take too much time to set up. So I had brought an alternative car mount, although it was less safe, it allowed us to quickly, you know, change positions on the vehicle and give us more time and more shots. We only had Sarab, Eric and I for this day. So while I was planning this, I thought it would be a really time-saving idea to have Sarab check into our second location which was 50 minutes from the first and get lighting set up. All right, and now uh, go ahead and stop and let them lead away. Check it out, look, you can look at yourself. Am I in focus? Hi guys, I'm looking at myself being shot through another camera, in uh, a camera. I don't even know if this is in focus. Is there, it is recording. It's opening. See, asking you shall receive. Asking you shall receive. When it rains, it fucking pours. Mm -hmm. Only on Tuesdays. Only okay. on Tuesdays. Let's right. hurry up. We are rocking and rolling. Yeah. Location two for today. Check this out. How's my hair, Eric? <laughs> just, just wait a second. Your hair was fire earlier, so I don't think it changed much. When it came down to the school bus, we we had discussed prior to what we wanted it to look like and the vibe and the, and the energy that we wanted to emit with the colors and everything. So what I had done for him was put together a lighting diagram on how I wanted the bus to look. It's not burning? Well, we'll see the smoke later. Look at Sam's hair on fleek. Oh man, I am so special. I feel so special. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that I love to focus on is motivating a lot of those lights. I didn't want them to feel like they were just there. So Sarap just kind of took the diagram and he rolled with it. When we showed up on set, I wanted to make sure we angled a lot of those lights or at least we placed them just in the right way based on the lighting plots to make sure that they all looked natural. They all looked like they were motivated. Once we finally arrived, Sarab gave us the rundown of the terrain and we got everything set fully up. Like always, things just started to fall into place and we were on a roll for a while. <laughs> I bet you thought I was gonna say something went wrong. You're so blue. <laughs> hmm? You guys are so blue. Yeah, my nose is also dripping. <laughs> we have light over here, our shimmery shimmery light, and our other blue light. Check out location two. Nothing bad happened on this shoot day. We were able to figure out everything really smoothly, and since it was a smaller team, we got more of an opportunity to bond with everyone. So, we're gonna dance, okay, yep, yep, yep. And then you're gonna bring her to this side, right? And then it's going to end off like right here. And then it'll just be you two kind of just looking at each other like this. Okay. Okay, you two. Yeah. Um, start from right here and then go over there and just start dancing. And so personally, I've gotten a lot of experience directing clients through these type of scenarios in my work with weddings. Oftentimes I'll have to direct couples to perform specific movements or walk them through scenarios that feel a little bit more organic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want us to go all the way around, son? Mm -hmm. 
And for those buzz scenes, it really helped make it very organic when we were uh, creating the shots uh, on the fly. It's less warm now, right? you know what I'm it's so crazy, I'm thinking it was school bus. Like. Because it matched the energy and the flow that Sam was going for uh, from the rollerblading rink to the bus scene because in the rollerblading rink we planned a lot of that stuff out and we wanted to make sure it flowed in a particular way. But as the story progresses, it becomes more um, spontaneous and more um, randomized almost. But obviously we have to make it look more uh, organized. So it worked itself out. Are you hopping in? Are you sure? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just so we can send this here, no problem. <laughs> That's a wrap. Yes, sir! Yeah. That is a wrap. That is a wrap. Nice work, everybody. And a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>